episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, how's things? Hey, man, what's going on? This morning here, I just had a coffee, so I'm good to go. And there's a little bit of sun, as you can see behind me. It's, um, we, we've had the most incredible summer in uh, the UK. And now we're having a beautiful, gentle uh, early autumn. There you go. There you go. Where We've just hit spring here, man, and it's uh, been bucketing down. <laughs> It's not too bad, but pretty good. Yeah, but, um, we had a bit of a drought this summer, so we're actually really uh, grateful for uh, rain these days. Yeah, dude. I've, you know what? I've spoken to a lot of dudes from uh, the States and the UK over the last month, and, uh, man, they've you guys have been ha- getting it hard, man. Like, I feel so sorry for you guys. I feel sorry for you guys because some of the shit you went through a few years ago and I just pray to God that it's not happen again, you know? Yeah, that's it. Like, knock on... Uh, I think that's wood. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, we don't need any fires. We don't need uh, shitty prime ministers. We don't need any... No, no, no. Yeah. You know what we need? We need some rock and roll. That's what we do uh, need. Segway. The world needs... Yeah, exactly. Rock and roll um, must never die. That's because right. without... Without that, it's just one of the, it's the, apart from anything else, it's a, it's a voice for young people um, to um, ex- express themselves you know, and to get across to thousands of people. And yeah, long may continue. There's a wave of new punky bands coming through, which I'm really kind of quite excited about. Yeah. I've just actually to Fontaine's DC you know I guess they're not quite so so much on the punk side but I really like that kind of Irish energy and that guy I think is a great lyricist and there's a bit of poetry going on are they big in Australia Fontaine's DC I haven't heard them no but we're having our own little there's something going on in our scene down here there's like a couple of bands that are really making waves uh like Amel and the Sniffers and um oh, yeah. the but, Chats. Yeah, yeah. Like um, that's, but I've heard I'm on the sniffers sound great. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I think there's a new in the early twenties. You know, there's a lot of uh, bands in the UK and Australia too. You know, yeah. um, they're kind of like raw and punky. I think what it is is the the lockdown that drove them mad. It drove them to the wet sand. But that's where you need to go. You need to go to your wet sand. You need to hit rock bottom, and then uh, and then you get that bounce effect. You know, especially when you're young. You know, and uh, it's great. It's great to see. Oh, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. There's something about to happen. You can feel it in the air and it's super exciting because people are sick of the sound cloud cloud rapping and they're sick of the the bleeps and whistles and they want real rock and roll and the kids are getting out to shows again, which is fucking awesome. Exactly. They want raw energy. They want it unfiltered, raw. You know, they don't want fucking processed beats and everything. They're sick to the fucking death of that stuff, yeah? Yeah. I oh, know I am. <laughs> I am. He made me swear, but it's probably the coffee. No, that's all right, mate. I swear, like I say, I'm on this thing. I try not to. I'll be good because there's someone, uh, probably your biggest fan. <laughs> I, I, I hope she watches this. She's she's five and she lives in Singapore. She's family friends of ours her name's mabel and she is like the biggest darkness fan in the world she's got like a darkness necklace she knows like all the mate she's massive so i hope i i, I promise i'll i'll keep the squares to a min, minimum mick sorry <laughs> okay i'm really flattered that means more than i can put into words when i hear about a little kid being into us like that it's just the best thing in the world oh mate it's like it's the next generation and she's not just into like obsessed there's videos and videos and videos of her like dancing and and rocking out to you guys 
her parents obviously, you know, they did a good job. You did a good job, Mick, and and Carly. So, <laughs> but, uh, what's that, man? Long may it continue. It's oh, great to hear. That's it. That's it. That's it. But uh, of, of course, man, uh, you know, the darkness, you guys are heading back down to Australia very, very soon uh, in support of your new album, uh, Motor Heart. And I love it, dude. Like, I love the energy of this thing. I love how it's, it's got, a, got a punk attitude to it. It's got a little bit of metal to it. It's got a bit of everything, man. It's got real engine behind it. It's sick. It has got an engine behind it. And uh, quite often that engine is uh, Rufus Tiger Taylor. Oh, yes. Yeah. But... Yeah, especially, um, especially on Glasgow and Motorhar and live, you know, those kind of tracks where he's like the engine is thoroughly um, kicking ass, you know. Has it, have you played much of this stuff live? Have you had a chance to take it to the pit? Yeah. yeah, we've been doing the festivals all summer all across Europe. And we also did uh, the UK tour and the American tour. We had seven weeks in the States. Uh, we were the first band for a lot of people. We did it in uh, March, April. And uh, most of the people we played to, and, and Canada too, we played all across the north of Canada, all the oil and gas lands of Canada, Winnipeg, Edmonton. And it's one of the longest tours we've done since we were, uh, since we broke, you know, seven whole weeks there. And that was just mind blowing. I, I've never experienced a tour like it because after five or six weeks, you start to become un, unhinged mm. on the all star. And it was great watching the cracks appear amongst each of us because <laughs> we, we know each other so well. Um, but um, myself and Rufus were drinking a lot of whiskey and we were sampling the whiskeys wherever we, we, we were. So we were sampling all the, the American versions, you know, the bourbons, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the Kentucky stuff. and that's great, you know, and then, I, and then after that, I started to feel quite strange because I was having whiskey every night. And then somebody told me that if you drink whiskey every night, it changes your metabolism. <laughs> what? So I was doing it because it helps you sleep really well on the tour bus. Yeah. Anyway, that, that was a good thing. You know, I don't drink beer, but I drink red wine and whiskey because I'm half Scotch and half French. Yes. So it makes sense. <laughs> well, we've just got tons of beer down here. And anything else is battery acid. I can't- uh, my age, you can't do beer anymore. Mate, I, I don't play. I shouldn't, but I do. You know, <laughs> I gotta watch the. I gotta hit the light beers. But um, man, I I saw you guys. I remember seeing you way back the first time. It was big day out in two thousand and four. I think it was. Was was you're right. It was early two thousand and four, January February. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I can remember. Normally, I don't remember tours, but I remember that one quite well, even though it was such a long time ago, eighteen years ago now. And I remember the Dandy Warhols. I remember the Strokes, the Kings of Leon, yeah. and Peaches. She blew me away, Peaches. Yeah. Because um, I also went to one of her solo shows because she was doing solo shows in between, and I had a night off, and I went to like a solo Peaches gig, and I was, geez, this girl is the Closest thing to Iggy Pop I've, I've ever seen, you know. Um, and she's still kicking ass now, you know. Yeah, still going hard. I, I saw something about her the other day. And, she, man, incredible. Incredible performer. I didn't get to those solo shows, but I saw her at Big Day Out. And I looked at the lineup of that thing, and it's like, man, that was lightning in a bottle. That lineup was, we just don't get it down here like that anymore. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> It was a special one. It was great to hang out with all these different people, meet all these characters. You know, Corny from the Dandy Warhols, he, he, he was a funny guy. You know, it's just like, yeah. almost not what you'd imagine, but he was quite, uh, <laughs> he was just like, you know, meet all these eccentrics. You know, you're meeting all these eccentrics. And the great thing about meeting these eccentrics is that, you know, they're never what you think, you know. They're always a bit different when you get to know them. And then Justin was hanging out with Lars, Lars from Metallica quite a lot. And um Wow. You just had some, and there was a few little squabbles as well that went on, but they were all sorted out and everything, you know. Crazy times, man. Talk, I mean, talking about touring and stuff, you've known, I mean, everyone knows the darkness, and I'm sure you've got plenty of mates all over the world. 
you know, and not, not touring for a little while and then getting back, back out there. Was it like having reunions everywhere you went, you know, catching up with a whole bunch of cats you hadn't seen in a while? Yeah, exactly. It was like that. And it was a bit like that at the Killer Hawkins uh, tribute show as well. Oh, yes. Um, in um, London, and I'm going to the one in uh, LA. I'm flying out, in fact, in a couple of days. Man. I just saw, uh, saw the, even, even though I'm not on the stage, I'm there to support Rufus and uh, Justin. Awesome. And um, yeah, for some reason, the, the flights have come down in price you know, uh, in September. So I'm going over there for a few days' holiday before I go to Australia just to practice my um, jet lag uh, recovery. <laughs> it's a long flight. Yeah, I know. It's like we're on the arse end of the world. We're like, there's here, and then we're all the way down here. So I feel, you know, feel for everyone that's got to make the trip. But we try and make oh, it. Listen, as soon as you get out and you see that crowd, you just soak up the energy of the crowd. It's a beautiful, it's an exchange of energy. The crowd feed off your energy and you feed off theirs, and it just keeps going around. It's, just, yep. it's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to be able to still be in music. It's, I just can't think of um, anything I would rather be doing. We, as I said, we love seeing you guys down here. So every time you come down, like we, we, you know, the show, shows are almost sold out, dude. I, I don't know if you know that, but it's like, it's. Oh, it's, yeah. Very close to, there's only a few left and a couple of them now. It's, it's, I just love the way the Australians get that. And, you know, they know that we were here the first time around and it got cut short and everything. And then everyone's kind of really come out and for us. It's, it's, it's just a great feeling, you know, it really is a great feeling. Because, you know, we can't, we haven't been able to tour Europe because of our government fucking up the conservative government being um selfish plebeian and i use the word plebeian because they have no understanding of culture yeah their culture um includes maybe occasionally going to the ballet or the theater just to be seen there you know but they have no understanding of the history of british music and you know no context of the 60s 70s 80s 90s being like a huge export of british music across the world and now they just shafted us and um, gone for this Brexit thing, and they haven't protected us. After Brexit, they haven't protected us with all the um, um, all the hoops we have to jump through. They haven't helped us. So it means that um, they have helped other professions, but they haven't helped musicians. They just don't care about musicians because they don't care about culture. Yeah. Sorry, that's my political soapbox over with. But I just, I, I just want to get that out there because... Um, it, for us and so many other bands not being able to tour Europe, especially the new bands, is um, horrific. We're going to try and do some dates um, over the next two years, but we're not going to be able to tour Europe like we used to, um, visit all the different countries because it's just too complicated and too expensive. Such a shame, dude. I'm so sorry to hear that and, and all you guys going through that, you know? Well, I feel sorry for the young bands, like like I say, you know, because it's taken away like a third or a quarter of their income. Yeah. Oh man, it's 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 not good. It's not good. I hope something changes in the near future. You know. Yeah. And, and I'm referring to Brexit, by the way. Yeah, just in case I didn't yes. make that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. No. I know. It's it's not. It's it's really sad what's happening. But um, you know, musos. We. I mean, everywhere we all get shit. something about the music. Sporting. You could be a sports ball person i don't do sports and they'll 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 throw out the streamers and they'll throw you know the golden rod but you go you're a muso they'll go oh, you don't know. yeah i hate it so, i know the awful thing the country is they bracket sports and culture together i'm not sure if they do that in, in, in australian politics but they have the minister for sports and culture now why on earth with the minister for um, how would you be able to balance yeah. and which is sport and culture. There has, there has to be separate ones um, negotiating with each other. Yeah. And expert, but, you know, uh, and you have to be an expert in both fields, not just a PR person. It's got to be someone that understands culture, that's, that's read up on culture and understands. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, totally. But, uh, go on. You know, it, it's a crazy situation. I'm starting to get fired up now. <laughs> I'm starting to feel it bubble up in me. But, um, man, I did want to mention, of course, uh, the album, which I, I said I love before. 
Um, the artwork is is amazing. You've always had great artwork, but I mean, this one with a giant robot woman with the the robo boobs. Would, would you call them? I don't know. But uh, you know, and the, it's very what's well, a phallic planet? Like, how would you describe? I'm trying to describe it the best way I can. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I guess it's quite Freudian, isn't it? Um, and I would say there's all kinds of, uh, it's quite metaphorical, isn't it? You know, what does that represent? You know, that alien women, I guess it's come out of lockdown and it's, you're, you're kind of trapped in technology. I don't want to speak for Justin because it's his yeah. lyrics, but I feel like he's expressing the, the fact that you're, um, surrounded with technology and algorithms and artificial intelligence really in its rudimentary forms um, in lockdown. And then after a while it becomes kind of sexualized and that becomes sexualized. Um, uh, um, and then it manifests itself in a female Europa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, has she got a name? Do you know if she's got? Motorhead. Oh, that's, that's actually her name. Okay. Well, maybe not literally, but I guess in a way it represents. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, but I guess you'd have to ask Justin about that. Okay. I'm just speculating. <laughs> That's a way better answer than what I thought it was going to be. I was going to like, yeah, it's, it's just uh, robo boobs uh, on a dick planet. You know, you, you actually gave me a, a serious. Like, does, uh, she, yeah, she does have boobs because she's a woman, but I don't feel that we've. Um, done it in a kind of gratuitous way no 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 no. but um there was another thing i wanted to ask you about of course was um easter easter is cancelled the album came out uh before and then easter was cancelled which was like it's true and also um in the sun the uh, biggest um newspaper here with the biggest circulation um, the headline in Easter during lockdown a year after the album had come out was Easter is cancelled be- because it was actually cancelled. It was, and it's only time before or since where I've heard that phrase Easter is yeah. cancelled. Well, Easter is cancelled came about because our manager wrote an email to the band in which he was um, talking about. Um, before the pandemic, and he said, um, "Oh, it looks like Easter is cancelled because something had popped up for us." Yeah, yeah. And then, and then myself and Justin uh, both exchanged. You know, there was a few jokes. We were like, "Easter is cancelled. Why? That sounds like something." You know, and we're like, "Oh, it sounds like an album title." You know, and then Justin came back with a um, find an image online of um, Jesus breaking free from the cross, and then we turned it into the uh, yeah. So I guess it's, it represented. Um, 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 empowerment against the establishment, yes. which was that one by by the Romans. You know the the um, stupidity of the um, the Romans feeling um, kind of challenged and insecure against the anti authoritarian um, anti authoritarian um, kind of Jesus. You know, at the time he was a yeah. he was a devil and a badass. You know? Did you did you get any flack for it? Was it hard to? Yeah, only little bits, um, bits here and there, mm. from, especially from, um, I guess, people who've been brought up in quite strict, maybe Catholic um, countries, the occasional Polish or Italian person. But I think the people that really kind of get us could see it was done quite gently, and there was a Monty Python reference there too. It wasn't done in a hateful way, and it was speculative as well. And Justin talked about it in terms of multiverse exploring the multiverse so there's different ways of looking at it and i, I like to think um, our fans are intelligent enough to can to see that wasn't us being uh, just kind of hateful uh, yeah. uh, is this jesus being empowered you know um so it was imagining like you know this this rebel being empowered and how different would history have been if uh, he hadn't been crucified you know, there's all kinds of questions you can ask yourself when you look at that. Like it, see, there's more layers to the darkness than than what people think. <laughs> like you're, you know what I mean? Sure. It's not just a fun party rock band that puts on a kick-ass rock show. You know, there is a lot more going on under under everything, and I think that's why we we love you. Guys. Yeah, just 
we all have a sense of mischief, but especially Justin, he's uh, mischievous and quite playful with his intelligence. He's an intelligent guy, but he uses it to be playful, which I admire about him, because a lot of people are bogged down by their intelligence and become self defeating So that's, that, that's, that, that's the thing I must respect Justin for. And one thing I do want to know, you, I, I think there's Lemmy and then there's you. You two of the most iconic stashes in rock and roll. How, yeah, like what? What's the secret? Because I can't do it. I've just got this, this, uh, whatever this this mop is. What's the secret to a to a good rock and roll stash, brother? Whiskey. Oh, <laughs> whiskey. Okay. I think it must be. I can't think of any other thing because it's when I, the more whiskey I drank, the more it grew, oh. and it could also. Be- Maybe a bit of Scottish blood as well. Uh, I guess an answer to that, I don't really know. Okay, on a purely technical level, if you want to be scientific about it, you have to uh, shave quite a lot. Because if you don't shave when you're younger, Mm. then it grows soft. But the more you shave, the more it grows back. And it grows back coarser. So that's one thing. Or it could just be jeans. It's really hard to say. And whiskey. See, I think that's where I failed. I just left left the bum fluff go, and I just can't. I can't do it. Like, it looks pretty good from from what I can see. Mm, thanks, man. Thanks. And maybe it's a bass player thing. You know, Lemmy, you. That's where I went wrong. It, it, it could be. <laughs> you're right. It could be something to do with the um, the pulsing vibration that's it's i think we've cracked the code <laughs> yeah because a lot of things in life they they come from that don't they from vibrations that's like right. reson- oh, everyone like resonance is the buzzword at the moment isn't it? everyone talks about resonating and resonance so maybe that's the answer there you go you hear that kids if you want a, a good rock and roll stash that's what you got to do that's what you gotta do. <laughs> um, dude, uh, what else? I mean, you got the tour coming up, the album's out everywhere. What else have you got coming up? What any sneaky surprises for 2023 and beyond for the darkness? Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of surprises next year. We're gonna be announcing things uh, soon. There's gonna be a lot of traveling mm. and no, but I I I'm very, very excited to uh be not only seeing you guys, but obviously seeing what you come up with next. Because uh, I'm a fan. Most of my friends are fans. You got fans in Singapore. You got, you know, we're all connected all over the world. And uh, part of that connection is, of course, the darkness. And uh, we love you for it, mate. Love it. It makes it sound like an octopus with tentacles reaching out to all corners of the globe. That's, that's a good theory. And a whole rabbit hole we could go down in. I could tell you some stuff. But no, that's a whole... Whole other thing. But in the meantime, though, we will be seeing you and the boys in Brisbane and the rest of Australia. Motor Heart is out now everywhere. And we'll have all the links down here. Mate, Frankie, take care of yourself. And uh, thanks for hanging out, dude. It's been really fun. It's been great. Really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, man. See you, See you brother. Take care. Bye. Bye.